Hey guys, so I really wanted to end this year on a high note by talking about one of my favorite sagas of all time. Now like everything else, it's not perfect, it does have its flaws and its problems, but it really does mean a lot to me and it means a lot to a whole lot of people. So because it's not every year that we get a Star Wars movie, I just figured, why not? Hopefully you've already seen Force Awakens Episode 7. If you haven't, this video does contain spoilers. So I'm just warning you. Um, and I'm mainly going to go over like the top mysteries slash questions and predictions slash theories revolving around the movie and leading us in to episode eight. Questions that need to be addressed at some point in the story after episode seven. First main question that I've heard a lot of people have goes something along the lines of where did Maz get Anakin slash Luke Skywalker's blue lightsaber from? It makes a lot of sense that people are having this question, because if you remember, the last time we saw that thing, it was uh, in Bespin, Cloud City, and it was attached to Luke's hand. And Luke's hand just kind of gave up on him for a bit there, you know? It, it fell off. So how did the lightsaber get from point A to point B? Well, the theory that I've subscribed to is that because Maz runs a cantina, she is constantly exposed to the company of traitors, bounty hunters, and scavengers that provide her with new bits of valuable information, as well as incredibly valuable artifacts. Now, did Maz get the lightsaber by herself, or did Luke bring it to her and tell her to hold on to it until the time was right? Those are questions for episode 8 to answer. To me, the most interesting part of this was learning that Luke can now use the Force to program objects and leave a part of his essence or instructions in these objects so that they follow some type of plan and are capable of activating and triggering stuff in the future. The next mystery is, who is Supreme Leader Snoke? I mean, we know that he's Kylo Ren's master, but who is he? How did he come to be? How did he come to power? And how does he know so much about the dark side of the Force? Well, some people are speculating that he's actually Darth Plagueis, a.k.a. Palpatine's master. Now, if you remember, Darth Plagueis is the only Sith in Star Wars history capable of stopping people from dying. So he could have possibly brought himself back to life by influencing the midichlorians. Now, that's the problem with this theory right here, is that if you bring Plagueis back you essentially have to bring the midi-chlorians back, and people hate that. A lot of people would just rather stick with the idea that the Force is like this mythical, mysterious thing that binds us all together and, you know, just gives things life. Uh, but anyway, another theory that I've seen floating around revolves around uh, Kylo Ren. There's a theory floating around that states that Kylo Ren, believe it or not, is actually a good guy, and that the reason why he allowed himself to be seduced by the dark side of the Force is so that he could gain enough power to destroy the First Order from the inside out. And this kind of goes along with what he told Han Solo before he killed him, about feeling like he was being torn apart, conflicted. Kind of like a Severus Snape or Itachi type of character. Now, in this theory's defense, if this is true, I guess it kind of explains why he was not able to kill uh, either Rey or Finn in the final battle. I mean, he wounded Finn, but he didn't really kill him, so maybe he knew how to, like slice him up enough to like harm him and leave him in a coma but not kill him and maybe that's why he just didn't like fucking kill ray and actually he gave ray a little bit of advice he told her you need a master you need to be trained and this kind of goes along with the scene in the movie where we see kylo ren talking to darth vader's helmet and saying i will finish what you started i'm like what, what do you mean finish what you started i mean like darth vader died saving his own son being kind of a good guy. Unfortunately though, even though I really like this theory, I don't think it's gonna be true because J.J. Abrams did an interview in which he was asked, why does Kylo Ren idolize Darth Vader? Uh, you know, if Darth Vader turned good, and J.J. Abrams, who is the director, said, well, he doesn't really idolize Anakin Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker was the one who turned good. Darth Vader, like, is, is a Sith, right, technically. According to J.J. Abrams, from Kylo Ren's point of view, Darth Vader was seduced by the light, not by the dark. Like, he ended up failing because he was seduced back into the light. And the number one mystery slash question in people's minds once they get out of the theater after watching Force Awakens is, who the fuck is Rey? Or rather, what's her lineage? Where did she come from? Who are her parents? And yes, another question might be like, what the hell has been happening to Luke all this time? Why did he really go into hiding? What's up with him? But, like, now, Rey is now the driving force of the story. So let's go back to basics, all right? If Rey is Luke Skywalker's daughter, that means that her and Kylo Ren are cousins. Now, according to George Lucas, who I know doesn't call the shots anymore, the story of Star Wars is, at its core, about family. The original trilogy was about Luke Skywalker, 
the prequels were about his father, Anakin Skywalker. So my point is, if Rey is not related, if she is not part of the Skywalker lineage, then what the fuck? I'll just try and keep it brief and simple here. Like, to me, Rey looks like Padme, like a lot. Like, there's like a genetic similarity between these two people, and I don't think that the casting was an accident. But people are going, like, hard on this. Like, they're, they're, they're pulling Sherlock Holmes theories on this. So... I even saw like this one video of somebody taking Ray's theme, like the musical theme for Ray, and, and they were saying that if you play it backwards, it's Anakin's theme. So there obviously is a connection between Ray and Anakin, and some people have even gone as far as saying that Ray could possibly be Anakin's reincarnation. Now what this means essentially is that if you remember in episode one, when Qui-Gon is talking to Anakin's mom, Anakin's mom says that Anakin really doesn't have a father. Like, she just got pregnant out of nowhere. Kind of like this this asexual conception. So the Force got this woman pregnant, okay? And you know how there was a prophecy about Anakin possibly being the Chosen One? You could argue that he ends up being the Chosen One by the end of Return of the Jedi because he is the one who defeats the Emperor, not Luke. Anakin Skywalker is the one who kills the Emperor by the end. So with Anakin dead after Return of the Jedi... And when I say after, I mean like a couple of years after, all right? And with Luke, you know, being in isolation and him being the only Jedi, if some evil, if somebody really in tune with the dark side, really powerful, were to, you know, be born or emerge within the galaxy, if this evil person were to be more powerful than Luke, then the Force would try to balance itself out by having another representative on the light side. People think that this representative is Rey, okay? Rey of light, even though the way you spell her name means king in Spanish. Now, if Rey happened to be the force in human form, the reincarnation of Anakin, this would make her the most powerful fucking individual ever since Anakin Skywalker, which is saying a lot, which explains why she's so good at everything. Another question I've seen people have is, how did Rey get the amount of training necessary you know, to be as good as she is in the movie, both force-wise and combat-wise. You know, because I've read some comments saying that maybe she had training when she was younger, like before she was left on Jakku. Um, as we learned in episode one, like technically Jedis should start their training when they're very young. Otherwise, they get too old and it's just not favorable for them to start that late. Like, did somebody program her like R2-D2 with special Jedi training exercises? inside of her mind that she could follow alone by herself or something. Okay, that, that's a joke. Um, but how did she know about the island? You know, because remember, when Kylo Ren is reading her mind, he says that you, you dream about an island, an ocean. And for the most part, like, I remember when Luke and Anakin, when, when they would get visions of stuff, it would usually be about people that they already knew and, and they cared about them, right? But notice that I said people they already knew. So unless Rey already knew Luke or something, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I do remember when, when she meets BB-8, BB-8 says that he's classified. And then Rey responds, yeah, so am I. So we have a lot of questions regarding Rey's identity as we head on to Episode 8. Now here's the thing, all right? Because Episode 7 was kind of molded and structured like A New Hope, Personally, I don't want episode 8 to follow a formula that I already know. I don't want it to be exactly like Empire Strikes Back. But in Empire Strikes Back, we do find out that Darth Vader is Luke's father. So thematically, if we consider Rey to be a parallel to Luke, it would make sense that we find out who her parents are in episode 8. This would kind of make sense as to why Luke didn't say anything in this movie because they wanted to keep the mystery and carry it on to the next episode. Now, like I mentioned in my previous video, all the Star Wars movies usually open up after a time skip. So if that happens, it sucks, but it seems like that conversation between Rey and Luke is probably gonna be skipped and we're gonna learn about it in another way. We're not gonna see it happen, but we're gonna find out about it somehow. So how do you think episode eight is gonna open up? Do you think that Rey is gonna be a fully trained Jedi by the beginning? Do you think that we're gonna open up like on the island where we left off? Those are just the thoughts and theories that I really wanted to get on video. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you did, I appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I hope you have a really 
really good new year. I wish you all the best in 2016. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.